Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. And I'm TJ. And a lot of people have been contacting us that have just got into the hobby and they want to get into multi-rotors or drones. Yeah, we've come up with categories to try to help you get into it. Yeah, the first thing is going to be sub $100, whether you're a kid wanting to get into it or whether you just want to see if you even like the aspect of flying, uh, this is a good bracket for you. Oh yeah, most definitely. When I first started out two years ago, Hubs and X4 is what I picked up. And it's still I, popular to this day. Yeah, yeah, and that's there's a good reason, man. I bash that thing around, replace the props, and, and throw done. it right back up. So the Hubson X4 is phenomenal. You mm -hmm. actually brought up a really great point too. Durability is essential when you're getting in the hobby yeah. and you're learning. So anytime that you buy one of these, you want to make sure there's parts like propellers, replacement motors, mm -hmm. uh, frames even, that you can actually continue to fix these because that's going to be one aspect in multi-rotors or drones right. you're always going to have to deal with. <laughs> They're not really easy to fly. Now, one real popular thing is the Inductrix, mm. and that's oh, from yeah. Horizon Hobby, and people have been modifying those, putting the FPV cameras on it, hopping up the motors. Uh, there's a full line of serviceable parts that are really good for these, but also, unlike the X4, you can fly Acro mode. Yep, and that was the second drone I ever bought. Was it? Yep, I went right from the Hubson to the Inductrix and learned how to fly rate mode, and it was very disheartening. <laughs> but. It worked. It works and yeah. it also gets you over the step to give you an experience of what actual drone racing like, you know, race quads, things like that mm -hmm. are going to be giving you. Another thing is it teaches the main components of a quad. You learn about motors, you learn about the props, you learn about how they're affected when they, you know, get damaged and things like right. that. Right. You know, those are the, the real small ones. Yeah. You know, if you want to stay in that same price range, you can jump up a little bit bigger to the Dromeda Ominous. The yeah, Ominous you know. is fun. And that's, you know, it's a bigger footprint, so mm -hmm. I wouldn't really try it inside too much, but still a good one yeah. for low price. A lot of people think that they have to go bigger for more fun, and actually mm -hmm. sometimes it's the exact opposite. These little inductrixes, yeah. especially when you modify them with little FPV cameras, you can fly them in the tightest little areas and, and make your house kind of like a whole playground. Yeah. And that gives you the freedom to really explore, but also do it in an area that's safe. One thing I strongly recommend is when you get up to the drama to size, take it out in your backyard, right. garage at minimum, and make sure that you don't fly around other people. Now, that's obviously covering the Sub 100 first mm -hmm. experience, whether you're a child or whether you're an adult and you wanted to see if you like flying a multi-rotor or a drone, that's a really good bracket. Now, a lot of people love aerial photography. They see it on YouTube, they see it obviously on our shows, yeah. and they want to get involved with a nice stable platform. And there's different price points, so we'll start from the cheapest way they get in all the way up to where we recommend for their greatest first experience of an AP platform. Yeah, and I mean, the, the cheapest could be just like the Phantom yeah. 3 standard. Phantom yeah. 3 standard, what yes. is that, 400 bucks? Uh, sub 500. Sub under, 500. Yeah, under, under 500, so you can get decent videos, aerial videos for under $500 now. Yeah. You got a, you got GPS stabilization, you got a decent camera. The one thing that you don't get from the higher price point is an HD down link yep. with less um, latency. Right. So you got more of a laggy vision that's working on a Wi-Fi link, so you don't have the range and things like that. But for taking it up and having a first experience, once again, it's sub $500. Right. A lot of bang for the buck. That technology just a couple years ago, well over $1,000. Yeah, easily. So going up a little higher, I just bought this. You just bought that and you have not that. left it. No, You've been no. charging batteries like crazy. It stays on my desk within reach and I fly it a few times a day because I'm not used to it. I don't fly <laughs> aerial video until now. Now aerial video is, is kind of like pushing a robot around in the air. The one reason why we really like the Mavic is, is actually, I call it the pilot drone. Yeah. It gives you a great flight experience, but it also gives you the ability to capture beautiful aerial photography. Yeah, it's it folds down real nice and small, fits in the bag. The price point is, uh, I think it's under a thousand if you just get the, yeah, the bird. Yeah, nine ninety nine for the basic, yeah. and you got you know object avoidance from the front. You got a beautiful camera. You got tap to focus. Uh, we have a really good review. If you've never seen this before, yeah. check out the review. We'll have a link down below. But this is about a thousand bucks. A deluxe version is twelve ninety nine. Yeah. Huge investment, but it's going to be an investment that lasts you a long time. Some people are even getting their 107 and making a living with real estate mm -hmm. photography off of this little guy right here. It's a great product. Yep. Now we're talking first experience. <clears throat> so if you're thinking, you know, someday I want to be a professional and I want to jump into movie filmmaking and things like that, and you have money and you want to do something like the Inspire 2, don't. <laughs> Start with the Mavic, go right off the bat. Do not get an Inspire 2. This is about a $3,000 drone, beautiful, and in the right hands, it's worth every penny but it's not where you need to start. You're gonna have a lot more frustration and a lot more issues in smaller areas and learning. Now previously, you noticed we jumped around to all different makes and manufacturers. One reason why we really stuck on DJI is because they're a great leader in the manufacturing industry for AP drones, and also they have lots of good options and multiple price points. So especially in the past year, there's been a big explosion. Huge. Huge, huge explosion. It's even on TV. Yeah, ESPN. DRL, ESPN, yeah. Yeah, with yeah. the uh, drone racing. Drone racing has become huge. And when you look at it from the outside, you may think, oh, I gotta go for the fastest, biggest, you know, most crazy experience, tip of the spear. 
It's not necessarily the case. No. So if you want to get into drone racing, you know, look around your area. A lot of leagues now have a beginner league that, you know, the, the actual professional, I guess you could say, is running four cell batteries. Well, the beginners are running, you know, three cell or smaller props. You know, it's not as fast, but it's still a lot of fun. And if you look on the backpacks of most professionals, you're going to mm -hmm. find something called a tiny whoop or a little tiny inductrix. And that is nothing but what we talked about earlier, which is a little tiny inductor to the little tiny camera. Look for the very near future of a lot of really great products like the Mosquito and many others coming out that are gonna be brushless versions of that that are really fun. So you don't need to go big and fast to have a lot of fun racing around. And once again, these little tiny inductrixes going around your living room at a high speed with the three of your friends mm -hmm. can be just as much fun as ripping through gates at 60 miles an hour. Yeah, and then if you have kids like me, you rip around the kids. <laughs> yes, you can, and you've done that quite a bit. Oh yeah, and they love it. It's awesome. <laughs> so the biggest thing is don't worry about going too fast too quickly. The biggest thing is learning the essentials to fly in properly and going through gates and throttle management and control theory. Yeah, and there's you can go you know ready to fly, bind and fly, yeah. already pre-built, uh, or you know even build your own. And yeah. that's the way most people do. Because if you're going into racing, you're going to be crashing. You're going to be hitting gates. You're going to be breaking things. Yeah. And if you break it you need to fix it. Yep, and if you built it, you'll know exactly how to fix it. Yeah. So if you're looking for a plug and play, ready to go solution, the Immersion RC Vortex has mm -hmm. kind of been a staple for a long time. A lot of great performance when you put a three cell on it, real docile, real right. easy, doesn't have too much acceleration. You can even fly it in horizon mode if you wish. Right. But when you put a four cell, it's a completely different animal. Now you're not gonna be racing internationally or winning many races with it, but it will give you the stepping stone to really have a good experience. Most amateur leagues or beginner leagues You'll be able to fly in that with no problem yeah. and really be able to be competitive. And on that same note, even if you build your own, you can build, you know, say the Cadillac of race quads, the fastest thing out there, but put a three cell battery mm -hmm. on it, some 5.3 props, and you're gonna have mm -hmm. a real docile uh, platform. Changing your props and your battery are gonna give you a softer touch, mm -hmm. a little bit more forgiveness, and a lot slower speed. Right. Sometimes a little bit longer flight time too. Yeah, for sure. You kind of hinted at this with the race quads, but one great aspect of building your own is if you can build it, you can fix it. And if you can fix it, you can modify it and tune it and also keep it up to date and have a really good experience in the process. DIY is kind of like the foundation that Flight Test is built on. So from the beginning, we've always started with build videos, parts lists, and everything with one click. We carry everything that will give you the best experience. If we believe in it, we carry it on our store. You'll be able to find your frames, your ESCs, motors, everything you want is gonna be right there. And then chances are there's a build video that goes right along with that frame. Yep, and you don't have to worry, did I get the right parts? You're gonna know because mm -hmm. it's gonna go right along with that build video, give you the best experience. Yeah, and then, you know, the same thing with DIY. You don't have to go with what we have in the store. Mm -hmm. Get an electro hub, throw a few arms on it, and figure out what you can make. Make it something yeah. different. Be a mad scientist. <laughs> One other really great aspect about DIY is you can constantly upgrade things and we have a great community of over 600,000 yeah. people. They feed their knowledge in constantly. So when they have a great idea, they share that. Yeah. And you can constantly be changing around and creating new things and having different experiences. Yep, and we're always learning from the community. So these are just a few categories and it's kind of our perspective. But right. one thing we'd really like you to do is if you've had a great experience or maybe a not so great experience with the product you chose as your first yeah. multi-rotor or drone, leave it in the comments below so other people can read that and benefit from your knowledge as well. We want to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.